Hey everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and welcome back to a series all about how to design and code a responsive landing page from start to finish. I'm getting better at saying that whole title in one breath. This is part two in the visual design process, so if you didn't watch part one, go back and check it out because in that video, we dictated the visual language and the look and feel of the project by building a really efficient style tile that's comprised of color palette, typography, image treatments, and some user interface elements to get us started. In this video, we're gonna be taking all the work we've done so far and applying applying it to a high-res mock-up that will be our final deliverable. I'm talking desktop HD all the way down to responsive mobile, and along the way, we're gonna be opening up the photo editor of your choice to build out some design assets we're gonna need to finish this thing out. I'm really, really stoked to get started and actually start building something that we can hand off as a final deliverable. I hope you're excited too. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is actually take our wireframe that we have here and I'm gonna make a duplicate of it and just bring it over to the right of the style tile and I'm gonna rename this desktop. We are gonna jump into design and actually start throwing some color at the page. Now, we have our style tile here on the left-hand side and that was exploration, that is direction. That's not necessarily a perfect formula for throwing everything onto this page. Um, so, you know, it's not just like copy A to B and we're done. We still have to make design decisions here. So that's what you're gonna be experiencing with me as I go along. Okay, so let's just knock a few things out of the way. Uh, first things first, uh, we did not make some sort of like logo for this project. So we might as well just make a really quick and dirty logo um, that just says like shoe app. That is the shoe app logo. I might just track it in a little bit to bring the whole thing together. That's maybe a little too much. So I'm just gonna do that. And I'm gonna move it up into its place and bring the whole thing down to an appropriate size, okay? I'm gonna hit Control L and just make sure everything's on the grid still. Obviously it is, because that's how we set up our wireframe, because we were super duper smart. I'm gonna hit some of the low hanging fruit. The first one to me is the treated images. So I'm just gonna come up here and paste one of my treated images in. There's, there's bad contrast between the typography and the background image. So, you know, we wanna just, I think, bump that up a little bit more, something like 90%, maybe even like 88. I wanna be able to see the image back there, but I don't wanna be able to focus on it too much. So I'm just gonna start moving slowly but surely. Um, some of these links and everything to white. Okay, so we're moving down the page, just kind of designing as we go. I feel like we already have that, that part mocked up, so I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna delete all of this and I'm just gonna paste this in and lift it up right there. And it's coming together a little bit. We haven't touched typography, we're gonna come back. I'm just gonna do layout first, I think, then typography um, and you know, come back through and do like maybe uh, assets and build all those and then put them in. It's a very iterative process as I design. I, I'm not 100% sure as I'm doing it. I feel like that's most designers, so. Um, next thing is like, where are we going to integrate the angles? Because I do like these neutral angles. It's kind of like we're building its own little section just based off nothing but, you know, negative space or white space. So I like that. I like going from a color into white. I feel like that's a better contrast between the two. So that's why I feel like I'm leaning towards this design decision. I think we can do the cards now, right? We already have a card style kind of built. So let's just come over here. Let's just replicate the card style instead of like pulling it over, okay? Okay, so what I did was just stretch out my artboard a little bit so I can, I just feel like I need a little bit more breathing room already. I'm not doing final spacing. I'm not trying to do perfection yet. I can just tell that I want a little bit more spacing. So I'm just gonna move that angle down a little bit like that 
And I'm gonna grab all three of them, my cards. I'm just gonna regroup those together and call it cards. I'm gonna give that a little bit of space. I'm gonna make it a little bit more weighted to the top because I know that this guy's gonna come through. And I feel like I can do a lot of the overlapping with just the angle itself. I feel like that makes sense to me. Like we know that this phone is what we are going to place in there. Um, and so, you know, we're gonna avoid that for, yeah, we'll just pop it in there for now. We'll remake it later so you can see the process as we do it. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop that in there. I'll probably like make it bigger. I don't know, let's, let's bring our grid up. It's always good to stay on the grid, okay? Um, and, okay. So we'll just pop that in there and we're seeing a little bit of overhang. I do want to make a quick note that as I'm designing this, this is a good example of designing for the web, like with the web in mind. Like how, how is this positioning going to take place in code? Like, is it going to stay in the grid the whole time? Could I, should I do something more exciting? Like, like actually drip it off the page like this and you know, or is it fine inside the grid? Is it gonna stay there? Is it gonna be on the on the mobile as well? We're gonna think through that. Um, how am I gonna code these angled areas to actually kind of overlap? Well, we'll talk about that when we get there, but I'm already kind of thinking about those things. And I just wanted to make sure that you understood that those thoughts are running through my mind already. How is this gonna be coded? How is this gonna be like worked out in code? So, okay. Um, I'm gonna grab my reviews and just bring them down a little bit. I really don't like these reviews. I feel like I don't like this layout. I'm thinking I'm going back on my decision. Um, I'm thinking I might actually just ditch these, these reviews maybe. I'm gonna get rid of the review thing and I'm gonna left align this. And what, what size was this guy? He was 42. Okay, so I might make this 42. And I remember that like one of our project recs was some sort of competition. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little competition thing down here instead. Kind of stylish. Uh-huh. Let's let's grab this other gradient and just make that a document gradient as well. And instead of doing like a we could do a solid color down here, like we haven't really worked the purple color, but the purple on its own is a little bit overwhelming. I feel like actually, you know what? We should do a photo. I really am liking the people. I feel like so Next, we are almost done, I feel like. Um, we're just gonna add like copyright information. Uh, let's do copyright. It's looking a little bit more like a design. I'm gonna quickly stop what I'm doing and we are gonna cut to making some of the assets. Uh, we're gonna open up Photoshop and just frame a couple of these phones and stuff. Um, okay, so now we have our phones, all our elements. So I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna copy that one. I'm gonna come back in here and I'm just gonna paste into that spot. Okay, so there you have it. We've created our desktop design, and now we need to create a responsive version of this design, a mobile version. We could do tablet as well as mobile, but I think that this design is simple enough that we can infer what's gonna happen in between the two and handle that more on the development side. I do think it's fun to look at our wireframe and our style tile and our design over on the right-hand side and see how they translated throughout the process. It's pretty cool, huh? 
Okay, to create our mobile design, we're gonna click A for artboard. I'm gonna hit a mobile artboard on there. I'm gonna stretch this way down knowing that we're gonna be probably at least that long. We can maybe shorten it up, we'll see. Now, when you think about mobile design, some people do a mobile first design, some people do not. Some people will design the desktop first like we've done and then shrink things down. Again, I think, you know, each of those kind of methodologies have their advantages. In this case, the design was simple enough that the translation between the two sizes is fairly simple. I think that when we shrink this thing down, it's gonna look fairly similar. The biggest question I have right now as I'm designing it is, um, is anything going to be stripped out? Is anything going to be removed? There's an age old question that says, if it gets removed on the mobile device, did it need to be on the desktop? For me, I think sometimes, yes, you can have both. You can have your cake and eat it too. You can offer a richer experience on a desktop browser than you can down on a mobile device. You have load time to think of, so images might get cut as long as they are not completely necessary to explain in the content. I think you can do that. So that's kind of the approach I'm gonna take as I design for the mobile kind of portion of this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the uh, hero kind of element and I'm gonna take it and click over to my mobile and I'm gonna paste it in there. And it's really, really big. So we don't, we don't need this to be that big, obviously. And what are the elements that we have inside of it? Okay, so we have the nav, so we're gonna wanna pull the nav over. Um, I think we'll probably want to do a little bit of resizing on the logo itself. So I'm just gonna drop that down a little bit. You don't wanna resize it so much that it, it loses you know, visibility on the mobile device but we are gonna take the nav and I think I'm totally gonna ditch the nav and instead of the nav, I think I'm gonna do some sort of like hamburger menu. I don't know, it's kinda cool, it's kinda modern. Maybe it's not cool, I don't know, but we're gonna try it, we're gonna go for it. <laughs> And I feel like this section right here, this section, okay, that I'm kind of painting a, a, a square around, that's like the new responsive hero image or header to the site. It can shrink up that much and save a lot of real estate. You'd still be able to see the content down below and know to scroll. So, okay, so next thing we're gonna do is, now that we've brought over our logos, we're going to bring over our features. I don't want to get too far ahead, but if we're coding this like you can do the slants or the angles two ways right now off the top of my head, like you can just um, do a transform of like the div that it's inside of and then put a wrapping div inside and retransform that so everything is level. Or you can do um, like a div and then do a pseudo element and put an element after it that's actually like a graphical element using pseudo elements. Now what's cool about doing it that way is we would be able to, on like a media query, like on a certain size, we'd be able to dictate turning off the angle. So that could be kind of fun. Um, I feel like having that kind of control is nice. So I'm gonna take this text and just release it from the layer style. breathing room, that title, and this whole section could come up a little bit, and maybe the breathing room, some more of the breathing room can come underneath it like so, and then we have the call to action there. That's all right, that's not bad. Um, I don't mind that. Okay, I think next, obviously, this section here, right, is, uh, I'm gonna group this, I'm gonna call this the background, and I'm just gonna bring it into here. 
giving it some space between the call to action, the button that's there. Um, obviously, I'm going to bring in doo -doo 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 -doo, like that. And uh, now we're bringing our photo overlay in. Now, if you don't know, like if you haven't noticed by now, most everything is dropping to a single column layout. And that's because with the amount of screen sizes and small screen sizes, and you never know how somebody's gonna be looking at your site, I feel like it's smart just to go one column, easy peasy. It's almost at this point, it's like, a standard pattern that people are used to. People are used to scrolling, you know, long distances on a mobile device. This has a lot of space, 12, and this has none. So we're just now gonna start bringing things together a little bit, okay? Now again, what is happening in between desktop and mobile is, uh, how are things squishing? How are things kind of working? Well, in my mind, I have a good idea of how those things are gonna work. And since, you know, this is a concept project, I don't need to lay out every single device size going down from desktop to mobile. I don't have to do tablet because this is my project. This is, this is a concept project. The client you might be working for or the project you might be working on might require you to have more detail throughout. It might require you to have really detailed animations and interactions. And I, I don't have anything about like hover states and active states. I don't have any of that kind of stuff. You know, not even simple like link covers I didn't do. I, you know, this is a basic kind of part of the visual design process. You can take this as far as you want to go, but overall, I think, you know, we've done a pretty decent job at creating something that's going to translate well um, on any screen resolution. Well, that's it. That is the visual design process for this project. The site is designed from desktop all the way down to mobile, and now we have a good idea of what we're gonna do in between those two stages. Now in the next video, we're gonna get set up in our development environment and get ready for code. Oh, I love getting ready for code. I just want to reach out and encourage you that if you've been following along in this process and actually building a site of your own, good for you. Congratulations. You've done a ton of work in this process and you have a lot to be proud of. Next, we're going to be building it out into code. So I hope you guys stick around. If you have any questions about any of the decisions or process that I did in this video, please leave them down in the comments. And if you like the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I do tons of videos about design and development and more videos in this series to come. So maybe hit that bell icon so you know when the next one comes out. I hope you guys are having a great week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and getting yourself all psyched up for development. I'll see you in the next one.